Hi everyone, this is YML and today we are going to talk about two important features that are usually used in speech processing for various tasks, deltas and delta deltas. To start with, let's briefly recap what a spectrogram is and how it is computed. Well, it's quite simple. The first thing you do is to window, meaning that you split the signal into consecutive segments of samples and then you apply some kind of spectral transformation like pass Fourier transform on each window. At the end, a more realistic view of the result in spectrogram would look like this. And what do you do with this spectrogram? You feed it to a machine learning model and use it to train the model for tasks like speech recognition, voice activity detection, or speaker change detection. In general, this works pretty well in practice. However, using just the spectrogram might pose an important problem in the task we are trying to solve. Namely, that it contains only the instantaneous features from the spectral transformation in a fixed window, while the information regarding the flow from one window to another is completely ignored. Speed signals are usually time-variant signals and in a content flux, and although we describe speech in linguistics as a concatenated sequence of phonemes, the acoustical signal is more accurately described as a sequence of transition between phonemes. And as a result, a machine learning model trained only on the spectrogram may not perform so well if it's lacking this information. The theme of this video, deltas and delta deltas, try to solve these issues by computing the following features. The deltas are simply the difference between the features found in each window in the spectrogram and it can be considered in an oversimplified way the first derivative of the spectrogram because it describes how the spectral information changes in time. Following this logic, the delta deltas can be considered the second derivative of the spectrogram being computed as the difference between deltas in each window, and thus capturing the flow of the change in the deltas features. So that's how you compute the deltas and delta deltas. Pretty straightforward, right? And yet it is quite powerful. Going back to the initial example where we feed the spectrogram to the model in order to train it on some task, if you were instead giving the model the spectrogram, the deltas and the delta deltas, then with a high probability the model's performance would improve. Why? Because it receives additional data regarding the flow of the spectral information, making it easier to find the relevant patterns. So, this was the video for today. I hope you enjoyed it. Please leave a like if you did, subscribe to be up to date with the new content, and until next time, I wish you a wonderful time. See you!